and welcome to the Leadership Book Club. We're talking about Chapter Two. I don't even know the, the name of Chapter Two. Maybe someone should tell me that. Is it priorities? Priorities. See, it would have been a priority. Priority point. number one. Know your chapter. Know your chapter. Uh, well, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, there's some of these parts in here where I feel like we've been working on some of this stuff already, probably our entire coaching career. Um, and there's some of the stuff towards the end for me where I was like, yeah, this is speaking to me. Um, but yeah, who wants to go ahead and kick us off and kind of tell us some of the takeaways, what they're getting from this chapter? I really liked it. It felt like a different book than the first chapter. I mean, obviously it's a new topic, but uh, I was real happy with this one. I mean, it really, we've all talked about the 80-20 before, but it was kind of nice to dig into that and see some examples. I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me was uh, the story about the airplane and the Everglades and the fact that the only problem was not even a problem. And it just had me thinking of all the areas in our business and in our lives where it's just we're, we're chasing things or feelings or concerns that maybe we just really aren't. You know, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I was going to put one big takeaway on it. And this isn't a quote from but after reading it, the big question I just kept asking myself was, Eric, if you had this business and for whatever reason, time warp, other responsibilities, whatever. If I only had two hours a week to put into this business, what would I do with it? And then of course I have more than two hours. So I'm kind of just uh, like, I'm, I'm just trying to think of how to leverage that. Like, okay, well, uh, you know, how can I take six hours or eight hours of the week and prioritize it on those things that I would do if that was the only time I had? It doesn't mean that's all I should work on my business, but it's like, let's really focus on what's super important. If you had to, if you had to, you know, pare it down and figure out what you were going to focus on. So that's kind of my question to myself after reading this book and how I'm trying to, I like the exercises and everything they have in there, but this chapter really just made me think, all right, well, if I'm, we're going to prioritize, what kind of exercise are we going to do to, to figure out what our priorities are? So I look forward to hearing what some of you guys say about that. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, I, I guess just putting it into perspective when, you know, he opens, he opens up the chapter and says, you can't manage time. Like we manage our priorities. Everybody has the same number of hours in a day. And so it's all about prioritizing the things. But I think my biggest standout was I, I, I just kind of wrote this down and I'm going to keep working on it, but I just made like a chart of like, high importance, high urgency. Like what are those things in my life? You know, yes, in my coaching business, but also chores, feeding the dogs, you know, things with land that Landon can do and delegate to him or to my husband, or, you know, what are those things that I put on my plate as like an urgent thing, you know, like laundry has to get done that can wait and that can go on somebody else's plan and things like that. So I think it's just really identifying what those things are and having clear priorities, like where they land on there so that I can kind of put everything where it's supposed to be and not feel overwhelmed. The non-negotiable. So that's what I got is like, I was just sitting here and the responsibilities and what's non-negotiable and what um, you cannot delegate. That was something that I struggle with all the time. It's like, I can't get delegate my business to somebody else per se or my job. So it's just how do I manage that time? So it kind of piggybacks to what Ashley and Eric are saying, but I just, that really resonated with me. It's like, and he said, every role has responsibilities that are non-negotiable. There are things that we must do and cannot delegate to anybody else. So that was just what one of the main takeaways I took out. I had a couple of things that, Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Well, I was just gonna I was just gonna reflect a little bit on what everybody's been saying and, and ask some questions. Um, and I'll try to be better at this. But like as we're talking about that, like share what's for you and your business, what is the non-negotiable? 
I'm doing the work. What part of the work? Yeah. What part of the work? I'm just making sure that I'm, I mean, I have no issues reaching out to my clients and talking to my clients and working with my clients and my coaches. Those that's not the hard work, right? The hard work is being consistent on my posts, being consistent on reaching out to people, being consistent on friending people. It's, it's more of the social media side of it, trying to just stay focused on doing that. And we know that that's the struggle with me being consistent. Mm. The clients, the coaches, not an issue at all. I'm in their message groups. I'm talking to them. It's the other stuff to build those clients and coaches, you know, get more clients and coaches. That is the hard work for me. That is the non-negotiable that I have to make sure is the rock in my schedule. So I quit ignoring my alarms. Right. I mean, we know I'm great at saying, oh yeah, I have it in my calendar, but when it comes up, it's like, Oh, I'm doing this. I'll do it later. Well, later never really comes. So that's got to be a non-negotiable. And that has to be something that I, I know I can't delegate that to anybody. So I have to make that a non-negotiable and make sure I'm doing it at the time that I have it set. Is there anything that anybody can think of that they can delegate? Maybe it's in the house. I can. It's it's not business wise, right? But it helps the business. That was one of the things that, um, really it kind of well what where does it say it oh who and what will fill my calendar and i was like oh my gosh there's so much on my calendar that i don't want there right where i'm like i don't even want to do that but it's on my calendar and i keep it there and i can't remember if it was on i don't jamil was sharing the other day and it, it was resonating with me around this when he was sharing that he was scared to delegate certain things like hire a house cleaner And I have been talking about hiring a house cleaner for like way too long. And I just don't do it regularly. Do it. That was the best thing I did three weeks ago. It's the best thing I ever did when I had a house cleaner previously. So why I'm not doing it, I don't know. It's like one of those silly little things, right? Where it's like, whatever. I can't, it's the chatter that is like, so it doesn't even make sense if I say it out loud, right? But when it's in your head and stopping you from calling the house cleaner that you like, Anyways, it's those sorts of things where, and if I'm honest, you guys, the level at which I keep my house clean is not even to my level of acceptance, right? Like, so I'm putting this task on my plate that I'm not even really succeeding at instead of just saying, I'd like to employ you and keep your business thriving also. Like what a selfish thing I'm doing. So just hire the stinking house cleaner and take that off of my calendar and everybody else's calendar. Cause then it falls on Carrie's and the kids, you know, I mean, it can say on the kids, they can clean their room, but the, you know, the, the big stuff that falls on our calendar that takes too much of our time and our house is still covered in dog hair all the time. You know what I mean? It's so funny. I feel that because it's like, we're currently debating the same thing and it's like, what? Like, oh, I don't want a housekeeper because they're not going to do it. Maybe they're not going to do what I want. But it's like, what am I even doing? Like, your house is, it's a wreck. <laughs> like, I'm not I'm doing just... what I want. <laughs> you know, it's You're so not dumb. Gonna do it right. It's like anything would be better than what I'm doing. My At this point, I like clean my toilets when I can't stand my toilet. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, like I cannot possibly. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> but, but, you know, you sit, you're like, I'm not even going to sit on that toilet. Like, that's so gross. So I clean it. And whatever but like the whole bathroom is rarely clean at the same time right like then I clean the mirror one day then I clean a sink one day so silly I could just have her come in once or twice a month and do a deep clean of the whole house My anyways that's when I have visitors I'm having a lot of visitors so that's we clean deep when the visitors are coming but after the people but other than that it kind of falls into where your boat is and you know I'm like what can I tolerate yeah <laughs> what's a priority totally. right? it doesn't end up being a priority until we have visitors yeah uh, the other thing that I, I really liked oh sorry go ahead no go for it oh um well it says practical people know how to get what they want philosophers know what they ought to want and leaders know how to get what they ought to want yeah that's good i really like that one and then i started thinking like well what should I ought to want? What ought I want? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, that kind of got me thinking of like stepping that up a bit and digging in deeper 
I'll start with the house cleaner. I ought to want the house cleaner. I thought it was interesting. He spent time on um, in the section about working smarter, not harder, which we've all heard before. But the one thing he said, which I'll tie it into something one of the ladies in our Bunko group talked about, but he's like, you have to have time for yourself. Like, not like you're not working all the time. People who work all the time, like they're not, they're probably not as productive as they think they are or producing as much as they think they are if they're working 24 seven, like that's not healthy. So it was a good reminder to take breaks. And, and I was talking to a coach uh, earlier this week, maybe it was last week, doesn't matter. And the person I was thinking of was Janice when we used to work with Janice, right? Janice would take four weeks off at a time, right? Nobody would bat an eye that Janice took four weeks off at a time. She was our director. Um, Well, people would bat an eye. They would complain about it, but she was the leader that the one thing I admired about her is she would take time regardless of whether or not it was going to get approved or there were projects on her plate. She was just going to take the time away because she knew how important that was to kind of take a break and recover and have self-care time. And one of the ladies at our Bunko group, um, we actually met her in Toastmasters, but she's reading a book where the author talks about how important it is to read fiction. And the reason is because if we always read nonfiction, we're always in the business mindset. Whereas if you read fiction, you now tap into the creative mindset. And so Mm -hmm. for her, that was a way for her to decompress and have her personal quiet time in the evening as she read fictions to get that imagination side of her brain working. And I thought that was fascinating how the two can really tie, tie in together, but self-care is really important. I like that. I listen to so much self-development stuff and what I've been doing is, you know, when I want to break, I'll listen to music while I'm riding a bike instead of my business stuff, because I I find that I was feeling kind of like you're saying like, Oh, I'm stuck thinking business Mm -hmm. all the time, but I hadn't even considered like, using fiction in that spot. And I used to love fiction and I never take the time to read it anymore. So I like that. Just to drop a quote, you were on the section right before this, the you can't have it all section. Um, I really liked a little quote he had put in there and said, he who seeks one thing and but one may hope to achieve it before life is done. But he who seeks all things, whether he goes Wherever he goes, must reap around him and whatever he sows, a harvest of barren regret. <laughs> was a little deep there, but like, honestly, I mean, that really struck me. As like, yeah, am I always trying to juggle every single plate? Am I trying to have every single thing and enjoying nothing? And what do we do about that? Like prioritizing what's important. Mm-hmm. Rebecca, I see you're off mute. I think you want to talk. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, I did have something that I was going to chime in, but I was trying to look up because I have the book on Audible. I didn't buy the book because I'm really bad at reading. And I'm trying to remember if this was in the third chapter or in the second chapter, but he talked about the three R's instead mm-hmm. of the academic three R's, the mm-hmm. um, requirement return result and that really made me think about really you know reprioritizing my calendar and kind of doing everything that everybody else has been talking about you know the house cleaner what I can delegate and all of those things and because the word requirement just kind of hit me different than everything else but like I said I really hope that was in the second chapter yeah that's in this chapter yeah oh, okay good yeah. Good. There were Something that else hit with me was fighting to keep 20% of your calendar as a white space. I tend to really fill up my calendar and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is so full. And I was looking at next week when I was reading this and I was like, I don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's no white space. It's like from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. that I'm working. And so it's just one of those things where I have to find that white space. I, I can say for Cindy and I, we, we used to, especially early on, we we're doing working full time, both of us and working this business full time as we we're building. Um, oh, my gosh. little kid. <laughs> um, 
that was one of the biggest problems in our lives. And if Cindy did not help create the margin, I would have kept working on Saturdays and Sundays and we would have kept getting interrupted with family time and it would have affected our marriage and would have kept affecting our family. And so we, we started to do that. And it, it began with just making sure Saturday and Sunday, nothing happened. And then I got a little more selfish and I said, okay, after two o'clock on Friday, because we started doing this full time, nothing's happened. I mean, we'll make exceptions, but no one can schedule. And then, and Eric and I were just talking recently where I'm like, I can't work till nine o'clock at night, Monday through Thursday. I don't want to. I've been doing this too long. I shouldn't have to, right? We, we deserve to not have to work till nine o'clock and, and not see our kids until nine, right? And so I started blocking off time, you know, at eight, after eight, you know, um, because we need it for our family. Um, and so think about that thing as well as you're growing your business. It's important because if you're not having fun and you're getting wore down, you will not last. Bottom line. And we've seen so many people burn. I was listening, to, I was watching uh, some of the things that era, uh, um, sorry, Josh had sent like, hey, here's who's close to ED. And I'm looking at the list of people that were close to ED. And the, the, it's at the end of the month. And these folks were FIBC a year ago. They're burnt out. They're doing too much. And they, they, now they're barely making executive director. So these little things are important as you're building and you need to pass these on to your, your coaches as well as you're helping develop them. The, the other thing I wanted to throw in here, I don't know if you, I, I'm a big believer in being proactive versus reactive. When we came to this business, there was a lot of reaction versus proactive, but I don't know if I didn't remember hearing it in the audible version, but it's in the book initiators, you know, prepare, plan ahead, the phone and make contact, anticipate problems, seize the moment, put their priorities in their calendars, and invest time in people. Reactors repair, live in the moment, wait for the phone to ring, react to problems, wait for the right moment, put other requests in their calendars, and, and they just spend time with people. They don't they don't invest. I thought that was, I didn't, and I just stumbled upon it because I don't remember hearing it yesterday. I think yeah, I bookmarked that too in my yeah. in the audible. Yeah, huge. And then my, my other big takeaway I'll throw in here real quick is um, when we're talking about what gives us the greatest return. Um, it, it, actually, I heard it from Emil uh, the other day when we were talking about this train uh, for October. And he had said, am I doing this or how well am I doing this? And I think we need to ask ourselves, like when we're doing with our clients, like, okay, I'm doing my phone call with my clients. How well am I doing my phone call with my clients? Am I phoning it in? Am I really paying attention? Um, or am I just, you know, just, just running through the, the, you know, the gauntlet of phone calls and the same thing with coaches. And, and as you're developing, you know, your coaches and you're partnering with them, what's that phone call look like? Are you just running through numbers and, or, or are we investing like development time in them as well and, or relational time, you know, friendship time. I think that's important. Um, so in here, the reason I've said that was, um, got me thinking was activity is not accomplishment. Um, productivity is, it got me thinking about what Emil said. So those are my, my two big takeaways. Yeah. So, um, going back into when you guys are talking about margin or creating margin, um, I like that so much because I think a lot of the times we try to balance our lives and either our business or our personal life and, I, I'm a strong believer that there is no such thing as balance. And so I think when we look at creating margin, um, it's such a huge difference maker because he goes into defining margin. Um, he says margin is the space that exists between our load and our limits. It is the amount allowed beyond that which is needed. It is something held in reserve for contingencies or unanticipated situations. Uh, margin is the gap between rest and exhaustion, the space between breathing freely and suffocating. Margin is the opposite of overload. And I'm just like, wow, that's, you know, like if we start to, you know, pile things on top of each other in our schedule or, you know, things like that, not leaving, you know, room for margin, then that's when we can definitely feel so overwhelmed and I've seen that, um, Ashley knows <laughs> it's, I've always tried to balance, you know, and I'm just like, that's, I'm never going to be successful in that. I just have to create margin and really prioritize, um, which goes back into what Ashley was talking about, about, um, the, the importance of needing to take precedence over the urgent. 
And so um, I, I think those two um, align. I mean, this whole chapter obviously comes together as a whole, but um, I'm, I'm writing these down too to help me stay focused on like, okay, what's at the top of my priority list and why, right? It's the high importance and high urgency and that's what needs to be at the top. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much my, my big takeaways. So good. I love that. I love, speaking on the same uh, topic, like it, it, when they talk about work expanding to fill the time available for its completion. And I was like, ah, oh, I mean, that one, it's like, oh yeah. So whatever, like I allow myself to have a 12 hour work day and then so magically my work fills that time, but is it even productive work? So that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I'd love to hear what you guys say on, especially with a business like this, because it's like, okay, well, I know my 20% of people that do uh, the 80% of production. So should I fill my day with them? But in a business like this, especially, we're dealing with everyone else and their margins as well. Like I can't just have a free moment here and say, oh, you know, I'm going to call this coach and I'm going to pour into them. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out like, how do I build structure and what do I do with that in-between time? that doesn't just become the non-productive stuff. I mean, we, we start thinking, we're not trying to be unproductive. Maybe we're scrolling Facebook, we're starting a couple of conversations and then we're chasing notifications and emails and boom, two hours is gone. So I'm trying to figure out how to prioritize that a little better. And especially in this business, like what do you guys, what do you guys fill those gaps with so that, and is that even important? I mean, I build all these rules for myself. Like my work needs to be, compartmentalized. I have relaxation, I have work, and I've got all kinds of rules on my OCD head about how a work day should work. <laughs> I was just thinking about when we were going through some of these questions that are exercises in the chapter, it was, um, what good things can I stop in order to do the best? And one of the things I wrote down was avoiding having unplanned white space, because that's where I'm not productive. So having planned white space where I block out that family time, like Andrew mentioned after, like, I do like 7 PM, usually depending on the day, like where it's like, no, this is the time where we're playing games and we're being intentional and we're off our phones and we're together and we're being together as a family unit. So being more intentional with those things, that's when I'm going to a coffee date with a friend. That's when I'm, you know, going to a play date with some moms. That's when I'm doing something productive where I'm building a relationship, but I'm also like filling up my cup and resting and not being in front of my computer scrolling or something. So I, I think I need to balance being rigid with that because I think there needs to be some spontaneity because that's also like the fun of life, but like not sacrificing what needs to be done. I just, can easily go down that rabbit trail. It's like, sure, I'll sit down in front of the couch and watch a movie with Landon for a little bit. And then it's like, holy three hours of my life gone when I should have been doing things um, in the middle of the day, you know? So, and then on that same vein, I actually made a note for myself where like, I, this has been on my heart this week specifically, but like, let my yeses be yeses and let my nos be nos. And I say yes to a lot of things um, outside of work that, end up being like commitments in the back of my brain that sometimes I end up not being able to follow through with. And so it was, yes, women's Bible study is great. And yes, Friday night going to the young adults to like help with them is great. And yes, I want to be there on Sundays. And like, there's all these other things that like socially or community wise, I kind of commit to, but like right now, as I have big goals for my business, I need to really fine tune, like where I can create some more of that space to build my business and to have the intentional white space. So it's not all like things that like, I have to be here tonight and you're here tonight and here tonight. Cause then that gets exhausting. Well, and I think you touched the nail on the head. Um, when you said you have big goals, because he says 95% achieve 95% of achieving goals is actually knowing what you want. And I think what we struggle with, with some coaches is they have no idea what they want or why they're even doing this business. And the longer you do that, that happens again. Um, Andrew and I are kind of living that season now where it's like, cool, this was the best that we planned Colorado. We knew what we wanted. Now it's like, well, now what? 
Andrew wants the RV. We're not eye to eye there yet. <laughs> um, so it's one of those things where unless you can really define the life that you want to build, it's really hard to create that white space or a structure that supports the life that you want to build. And so it's getting super, super clear with that with your coaches, because if they're like, oh, I just want to make $2,000. Okay. But well, what does that $2,000 represent to you? And if we don't know, then it's going to be easy when they have white space to do nothing because there's no big driver or motivator or pool to want to do this. Um, so I don't know. Those were just kind of my two thoughts because he mentions it in the chapter about the goals. Circling back to your question though, Eric, um, about like ideas, I think that looks different for everybody. And I only say that because like, I don't mind front loading our week or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we are working sometimes from eight to nine at night, but that's only the first part of the week versus the second part of the week for, because I don't want to work weekends for others. They love working weekends because they're significant others home and they can balance taking care of the kids or what have you. That's Monty. Sorry. Um, so it depends on, I think it depends on the person and people's family dynamic. Again, going back to what do you want that to look like in your family? What's important. And then how do you build around that? I was even thinking about it. I, 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 Eric, I really was thinking about, it. I was remember that part of the, the audio book as I was walking, I'm like, in, in our organization and, and everybody organization is different and, you know, but like, how does that work? You know, what does 80, 20 look like in investing time in coaches or in the business? Like, what does that look like? So I am chewing on that. That's a, that's probably one of the biggest questions for me at uh, this chapter is where can we get the most bang for our buck with the time that we do spend? I mean, that's, that is, I mean, you know, we got the client acquisition part, which is, that is what that is, right? The client conversation, I mean, the conversations, the posting, the inspiring, all those things like that. I don't think that changes too much, but as you're working with coaches and, and, and as you all will, right. As you're building your business, um, th that's, that's a, that's a conundrum for me, how that, how that plays out. And if I do that wrong, it could, it could be devastating for a business, right? If I, if I, if I miscalculated what 80, 20 looks like. So I, that's what I'm thinking about. Well, the priorities they hand us and I mean, that we hear uh, all the way up from Dr. A is client acquisition, client support, coach acquisition, coach support. And so to me, I mean, that makes a lot of sense business-wise as to what our priorities are. And I think, well, for me, like I'm really good at thinking of that on the coach side of like, okay, you know, these are the businesses that need my most attention. But I think I'm really terrible at doing that on the client side because it doesn't always feel great, but I think it still exists there. You know, like, are we, are you spending equal amount of time chasing down the client who doesn't follow plan, doesn't read the book and, and doesn't, you know, engage with the coaching as you are with the client that really is looking forward to talking to you once a week. And it really hits me because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm doing 15 minute blocks for like everybody. And it's like, let's be honest. I should give this guy a 15 minute block once a month. and give that one who's really engaging maybe 20, 30 minutes a week, you know, and make room for one by shifting the other. Um, I'm curious what you guys think about that. I mean, I, I try to, I try to have like some kind of equality until someone tells me they don't want to talk to me or it's just obvious, you know, I, I mean, we get to that point with clients, but there's a big difference between an engaged client and a non-engaged client. We, and I, I find that I spend almost as much time with a non-engaged client as I do with the, the engaged ones. And I, I think that's a misstep. It's, it's tough when, when, you know, you're, you're chasing their engagement, you want them to be engaged, you want them to be integrated. And that's why we do that because we know how important that is. I, as you're talking about but it. But I think, uh, let me interrupt because I think my my issue is I think I do it. Like the reason it doesn't feel good to me is I think that I do it because I want them to keep going. Like this guy's not succeeding in what in the program, but I'm like, well, if I just call and be friendly to him, maybe he'll make another order, you know, but he's not. Now, I'm saying he, it sounds like I'm talking about a specific person. Maybe I have one in mind, but there's tons of them. I just mean, am I just going through the motions, hoping they'll make another order? 
And if I so, think it like, depends who, is, on who the, is that even serving? Yeah, that's a, it's a good point. I, I think it depends on the person. When you said that, I think of one client that comes to mind that I, I talk to every week. Um, half engaged, half not. She's been on program over a year. Like she is so consistently someone who orders. I think maybe she pushed out once, um, but has really been at a plateau for, I don't know, of the year and a half, maybe six months of her year and a half. She's been at a plateau, but life's happening. Like there's there's just things going on. Her ex literally just passed away three days ago. So it's one of those things where you can hopefully get the sense of, okay, does this person need community too, right? Because I feel like part of our role is building relationships and community. And if I can pour into this person, even non-related to program every week, because she just has so much life going on, then for me, that's time well served because I'm building trust with this person. She doesn't see herself as just another call on Cindy's schedule, right? Just not another client number. She knows I'm invested in our relationship. Now there's some a lot actually, where I'm like, okay, these people aren't invested in our relationship. They don't share anything, you know, every week that we can talk about, and they're still bobbling those. We definitely wean off. What I find is those wean themselves off more than anything though, because, well, they get tired of our phone calls because we don't talk about anything because they're not in the books and, you know, they're not overly engaged, but for the ones that do continue to engage, at least speaking from my experience, I will continue to engage with them because they need community. And I think that is one of the aspects that we provide. I felt yeah, that definitely. Too, and it, sometimes we're in a place in our business where it's out of desperation. And so you're not the only one that's done that or felt that way uh, in regards to, you know, you know, maybe they'll keep going and I need that frontline volume. Like that's just real life. And so, you know, when we're trying to, you know, earn a living, um, so that, that's not that those sorts of things haven't popped in my head, uh, especially early on when we were in this business. So. Anna has a really good tip for that, by the way. And Anna, I don't know if you still do this, but don't you bucket yeah. those people? Yeah, I do. Yep. I picked a, so I do the most of them on Wednesday mornings. I blocked that time for myself and I don't tell them exactly what time I will call them. I put them on my Wednesday schedule and I say, I'll call you sometime between nine and noon. And I just start at the top of the list and I call down the list and sometimes I'm done by 930 and then I have white space again on my calendar. So I give them the same respect for my calendar as they do and they no longer take, you know, an actual block on my calendar. Um, They kind of get thrown into this Wednesday bucket. So I call them every week. They, most of them don't answer. Um, And it's worked really well for me because I no longer feel disappointed. If I'm honest, sometimes I'm like, yes. I get to go for a walk or I get to go <laughs> through the city or, you know what I mean? Like there's been oh, so I like much, that. You I, know, like that. I don't feel disrespected by them anymore. I feel like we're back on that even playing field where I'm meeting them where they're at in their journey instead of like, Ugh, I could have gone to the grocery store if I had known that you weren't going to answer again. But the honest truth is I did know that you weren't going to answer again because right. you never answer. <laughs> Except every time you go to the grocery store and you're like, oh, I'll call them real quick. And then they answer. <laughs> right. So I just kind of put those folks in, in that bucket and I have I them on it. one day. And of course, some others like trickle in. Like I kind of need to revamp again where I have a few more that have kind of re-engaged and a few that are so it's getting a little messy on Wednesday, but I need to go back through and those that have really re-engaged. I mean, it's a simple conversation, right? Like, Hey, I've had a few things come up on my calendar. I need to move a couple people around. Are you available on Mondays at 3.15? I mean, you don't have to tell them, like, since you're free engaged, I'd like to give you an actual spot on my calendar. Like, it, that's, we're protecting that time for ourselves, right? Yeah. And meeting them where they're at. So when they're more engaged, I can move them back to a more consistent time where I am more engaged and not so much looking forward to doing something different. Um, so into the weeds on your logistics there, like, do you, sure. uh, let's say, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, let's say that's a two hour block. Like, do you, so you mark that time as busy, so it can't be booked Correct. in other ways. And then you just front load it. You try to make all your calls at the beginning of it. And if nobody answers, I do make all my calls and yeah, I just go down the list. So let's say that they all answered, it would probably take me about, you know, I don't, I have nine to noon blocked. Right. Um, if everybody answered, it might take the whole time, but nobody's ever right. going to answer. Or, right. I mean, not and, everybody's ever going to answer. 
Totally. And so what ends up happening is that I end up having that white space. And so I'm able to use it. So most of the time I choose to use that for me time. Like I get to go for a walk or I, maybe I go paint my nails or, you know, read a book that I've been wanting to read or meditate or, you know, something like that. Um, go to the store that I've been, you know, I don't like lately I've been wanting to look for Halloween decorations. So that might be a time that I get to like, go just do the thing that Anna wants to do. Or if I have action that I've been feeling behind on, then maybe I complete those action steps that I've been wanting to get caught up on. So whatever I want to use that for um, is what I end up using it for, but it's been really helpful to not, I don't know if you've, I mean, I know you have because who hasn't as they build this business where you block out all of this time for people and you spend an hour and a half for one 15 minute phone call. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're like, did I seriously just sit here calling people waiting to call the next person, waiting to call the next person. And like the one person at the end of the day actually answers what a waste of your time, you know? So that's been really helpful for me. I have a quick question about that, actually, because I like that idea. But I mean, obviously, all those clients don't work during the day or I mean, because I mean, I would like to do that, too. But I know, you know, these certain people work during the day, so they wouldn't be able to answer answer regardless. So are is that how you divide out your clients to do a bucket list kind of thing? Um, i would never really even asked them, like, do you work? I mean, most of them don't. Like, they're able to take calls during the day or at least oh, okay. they, said they, they said they were when I asked if that time would work for them. Um, okay. But so, if, yeah, if you know that, about it. so then maybe you block one, you know, later in the day where it's like, I don't know. Mondays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., you call all those people. And then you know that sometimes you're going to get through it really fast and no one's going to answer and you have white space now. But you block, just put them all on one day so that you're not trickling through and every night of the week you're calling one or two disengaged people and taking your family time away every single night for people that don't respect your time anyways. Just put them all on one night. Hopefully, oh, I like that. The bucket uh, list. <laughs> yeah, this. Uh, I would always, as you're going through this as a as a as a new coach, or even as we're old coaches, is is I would always ask, like, what do your calls look like? Have, how have you set them up for success in this? As you're, yeah, bringing them in into the into the program, what expectations did you set for them? Um, and I, I always put it on us first. Like, could there's there's something that we could be doing better? And then if that's not the answer with that particular person then totally me, some of those folks they just get text message check-ins because they were very disrespectful my time and that's yeah how I do it. Um, I'm, and andrew that's a really great point people don't go on this bucket list for me until i've tried multiple times but usually it's three different times so i'll say like hey it looks like 10 45 on wednesdays or that's not a good time 10 45 on tuesdays isn't working for you okay. would would mondays at 4 p.m. be better and if they're like oh yeah that's so much better I'm like awesome let's move to Mondays at 4 p.m. I can't wait to connect weekly and then when that same thing happens I'm like hey it looks like Mondays isn't working anymore for you would whatever work better for you so it's it's when the the behavior is consistent when I've moved their time around that it's like you just don't you just aren't going to answer for for these calls they're not important to you so Andrew that's a really really good point I don't just get frustrated by a client when they don't answer two weeks in a row and then put them on this bucket list it's like I really give it my you know, I, like you're saying, what can I do differently and how can yeah. I engage them differently before they, you know, fall onto that list? So yeah. I really have probably of my 50 ordering entities, maybe six people that fall on that list. So mm-hmm. six to eight, depending. So it's not like it's a long list. Yeah. No, I just have a couple that um, week after week after week, I call, I call, you know, I send a message trying to reschedule and Sometimes she replies, sometimes she doesn't. She orders every month, but there's no true engagement. So like I said, there's a couple of them like that. So that's Sometimes, Rebecca, it's like uh, a little bit of a tough conversation, but, you, you know, an honest conversation with someone like that. Two, two parts to this honesty. One about, you know, what they need or what they said they wanted. 
But the second part is also about what we need and how our life works. You know, and I don't have any problem telling someone, you know, after a couple of misses, especially on an evening call, I'm like, look, evening time is super high prime real estate for me. And this is not said to make you feel guilty or anything. I'm just saying, if you're not able to make 745, like regularly without telling me that there's a problem ahead of time, then we got to find another slot because everybody wants these evening times. This is where my most engaged clients come who I know are reading the book, who I know want to engage in my coaching because it's a big part of this program. And then that can kind of help with the conversation because either they're going to say, oh, well, I really want to be a super engaged client and get the most out of this program. Okay, well, then how are we going to make this work? Or they're like, you know, honestly, I just don't see the value in the coaching. Okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit. But, you know, whatever, however that ends up, now it's like, all right, now, you know, explaining what, what, uh, Anna's doing with them. Like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to call you during this time. Would that ever work? Is there a lunchtime? Is there a commute? Because they're not super engaging anyway. I don't mind talking with that person on their way to work, on their way home from work. I mean, yeah, I know they're not sitting there taking notes, but honestly, I might have a better conversation with them during a commute than I'm trying to get them at seven o'clock and they're trying to make dinner for the kids and everything's just cray cray. <laughs> so, you know, Keep it open and be honest with them about what they want and what you need and how those things fit together. I think a lot of us kind of feel bad about that. And it's like, we're not on beck and call 100% of the time. I mean, we can't be. And I tell them, I, I serve, you know, whatever, dozens of clients at a time. So this is what I have to do to make this work. Is this, how can we make this work for you? Yeah. And this month has think- been a lot. So I, I, I need to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this seems very timely. I know we're gone we're really far over, but especially for the leaders in this group, super timely, this conversation, as you think about maps this next week, map calls with all your coaches, kind of tying it back to the book is getting really crystal clear on the goals for yourself and your coaches and how to find that white space and prioritize and helping your coaches prioritize. Cause as you're going through maps with them, if their goal is ED and they're a senior coach, you know, they're going to have to prioritize some more space in their business. And Leanne, I love that you said there's no such thing as balance. I've been thinking about that ever since you said that. Um, But really honing it in with them this month, because we're hitting, not that we're hitting a slow season because anything can happen the next three months. But if your coaches have big goals, the only way they're going to get there is by prioritizing this work. And if life constantly happens to them, they have to know how to fit this work somewhere else throughout their day. So I thought this chapter was very timely, you guys. Super timely. Oh, dude. I have to hop in on that because this whole like agonized versus organized, like I I work here, my hard hat job, like 50, 60 hours a week. And I I just made it to the one right before ED (laughs) after like three months of waking up every, like Anna and I started 5 a.m. club. And so I get up. at 4 30 in the morning now so I can get my face washed and like get my teeth brushed and have my shake made and have my French press going like I have this insanely organized life and I my whole life would have told you that I'm the most disorganized person you've ever met I miss stuff constantly like I am not someone who shows up and does stuff um but this has been like having a routine of things that I am doing that happens no matter what, especially on Sundays when I really, really don't feel like it. Like I've got one day a week, I don't set an alarm and I'm still freaking up. And it is like, I just get up and I do the things and no matter what I win my day and I will not no matter what. Right. I do also, they talked about having a to-do list and I circled that and I was like, that's just my win the day card. That's all that is. But like, there's days I don't win my day and I work 60 hours a week. So guess what? there's just days I don't win my day and having that, like, you know, I have the drive and I try really hard and, but, but the organization difference, like I don't agonize anymore. I don't wonder what's going to go on. Cause it's on my calendar. It's like, I, I know what's going to go on. So my watch every morning tells me what's going to happen. It's like, here's what's on your calendar for today. It's da, 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 da. And I do start to feel a little overwhelmed, but I've got time blocked out too for like no phone, no, nothing, no, you know, anyway, it's, I love this. Sorry. 
I'm so glad you chimed in because I was literally just like, do I call her out on this topic? Because I feel like she has something to say and she's not saying anything. And it's like perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, she's talked to us on our calls about you in exhaustion, let me tell you. So um, oh. um, I've seen on this is you guys are the go-getters. You guys want more. You guys want to become more. You guys are, I mean, either you're, you're on your way to ED or you are ED. And I mean, you're on your way because I'm watching like Rebecca is crushing it. Cap, what, like 10 new clients this month or something like that. Rebecca, I think you had six or seven. I'm, I'm watching. I'm paying attention, right? Like, um, So you guys, I, I know this, this is such a wonderful thing that you're in here. Um, and then, you know, we've got the old souls in here, uh, Eric and Anna uh, and myself who've been here for, and Cher actually has been here for a hot minute, right? We've, we've, <laughs> we've been doing this a long time together we got to keep that fire of wanting to become more and become better. And I love that you guys are a part of this thing. Um, I want to make sure we respect a little bit of your time. Maybe you're only 10 minutes away from an hour, but um, this is a really good conversation where we intertwine this book and life and business. Um, I'm really proud of you guys. You guys are doing awesome. So uh, two weeks from now, we talk about character. Huge. So, um, all right, you guys. Uh, before I just shut it out, anybody else want to say anything before I go? Other than bye? Just thank you. That was a lot of good information. I appreciate it. Good, Rebecca. Awesome. Wait, I need a post for this morning. Someone take a picture and share it with me. <laughs> or pop it in this group <laughs> after you do. But you have to smile because Andrew always takes someone who doesn't smile. So I don't know who's taking the picture, <laughs> but warn us. Smile, okay. It doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> I can do a screenshot. Did somebody get it? I'm still frozen. Are we done? I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Eric. I'm like, I just got that page to get in on. Are we done? <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. But Club, what are you doing? Oh, four minutes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.